Hello, welcome everyone. It is More Than Organized Monday. And today um, we're going to talk about plug in money link links and what that has to do with organizing. And it's interesting, but it didn't even occur to me when I started organizing how much money I could help people save. There's a very bad glare on my glasses. I apologize for that. Um, so turns out a lot of things are leaking money about the way you're organized, the way you're setting yourself up for success. So there's four really easy things we can do to help plug those money leaks. And they're really easy. Um, some take a little bit more effort than others, just because you might be a little farther behind. But these four things I see in almost every house I go in. And um, I think that it's interesting to think about it. A lot of it is mindset around your stuff that automatically kind of plugs the leaks. And so that that's what I found with many of my clients. Um, on at, Last time I calculated, and it's been a couple of years, probably pre-pandemic, uh, since I did the calculation on what I was hearing from my clients. The average I save my clients month in, month out um, is $400. So, you know, there's some people that save a lot more, but um, very few people save less than that. So um, $400 is what the average ends up being. And it's, it's simple little things. It's kind of the latte factor, but not. So it's not about deprivation. It's much more about scarcity mindset. Um, and so these areas will just help you think through how you want to choose to spend your money, because that's what it really is. It's people spending money on things they think they're choosing in the moment and they're on top of, but because they didn't pre-decide, pre-plan, um, figure out how the purchase was going to work with the other things, it becomes not a great decision or it becomes a default decision because you're depleted and tired when you're, you're making the decision. Um, there's a lot of avoidance that happens to that retail therapy thing is part of, part of what we're talking about, how the, um, going to the store to feel better is a limited amount of time. And instead you could feel much better by just controlling some of the stuff in your life. Um, but it all comes down to these four things. Um, the first one is, is about knowing what's going on in your house or your office. Um, so you've got to know what you have, where it is, and when you need to replace things. So having some sort of a household inventory, if it's written down or just in your brain, I do suggest actually writing some of it down, like your regularly to your regular toiletries or hygiene products. What is the brand you use? What is the size package you like to use? How often do you need to replace it? Things like cleaning supplies. Do you need to buy more laundry detergent or could you use up the 12 bottles that are already in the laundry room, all with about three loads in them? That might help both the money and the clutter, right? You may realize you only need to replace things every so often, not nearly as, as often as you have been. And you can use up your backlog for a while. Um, so knowing when you're going to replace things. I'm a big fan of having two, one in use and one is my backup. And when the backup goes to in use, I add it to my list. And then the list gets purchased the next time I'm at that store and I have a plan of when I go to the various stores. So I have a grocery list. I have a drugstore list. I have like a target list. I have a couple other stores that I go to frequently staples, a couple other places. And so when I'm going to go there anyway, I buy the things that are already on the list and that's the things I know I need to buy. So know what you have, where it is and when you're going to replace it. Maybe you have a family and you can't wait till the last one like I can, but maybe when you open the third to the last version of something, whatever it is that you're comfortable with, you get to decide. The second piece is that always shopping with a list or a plan. That's not to say you can never buy something new or try something new, but if you go to the store every single day, you're much more likely to pick up an extra $10 10 to $50 worth of stuff every week that you didn't need just because you happen to be at the store and you see something. 
So if you're only at the store once a month instead of every week, you're already cutting a bunch of those impulse purchases off the list, right? You're much more likely to have something on the list that you can wait till next time when you are pretty sure the store usually has a store on that third Wednesday of the month or something like that. You get to start realizing how often you actually need to replace things, um, not just because you happen to see it in the store. So plan when you're going to the store and do it in a, at a regularly scheduled interval. Um, always have a list. Never go into a store without a list. There's no reason to go into a store without a list unless you are literally window shopping, in which case you're not going to buy anything that day anyway. Even if you really find something you love, put it on hold. Wait 24 hours and then go back and get it. Um, all right, it doesn't work at the grocery store, but that's why you're not going to be going to the grocery store every single day. You're going to go once a week, twice a week, maybe. Um, but limit the number of times you actually go to the store and you will spend less money. Don't order it online either. That counts as, you know, don't just browse around Etsy for four hours. Browse Etsy when you need the thing, the one thing, and then you get to pick your favorite of that. Um, okay, buy just what you need. Know how much you really need. So it touches back on knowing what you have, where it is, how much you have room for. Buying 12 things at Costco, if you don't have enough cabinet space for the 12 things, isn't really that helpful. You're going to be more pissed off about it. Um, or you're going to put it somewhere that's inconvenient and then you're going to forget that you have more in that backup location and you're going to accidentally buy more. So buy just what you need when you need it and become really aware of when you need something. Um, so don't stock up. Also, one of the ways <clears throat> you can use these thoughts to um, kind of help with the clutter as well as the money is to start using up what you already have. What if you didn't go grocery shopping except for like milk and bread for the next three weeks? Do you have enough food in your house that you could do that? Could you use up all the food in your pantry and your freezer and live for three weeks without going to the grocery store? I can. <laughs> and I don't have very much food. So I don't think I've ever been in a house that couldn't go at least a couple of weeks without actually having to go to the grocery store. Um, except for the, the stuff that literally gets used up every single day, like milk and coffee and bread. Um, so think about that. But also in the other areas, the cleaning supplies, how many different versions of spray cleaners do you have? Especially after this pandemic, how many disinfecting wipes do you have? Use them all up before you buy any more. It limits the clutter and it will save you money because you will be starting from a place of knowing what you have and what you actually need and how many will fit in your space. All right. So let's review that again real quick. Know what you have, where it goes, and when you're going to replace it. Always shop with a list. Limit the trips to the store by planning when you're going to take those trips and buy just what you need when much closer to when you actually need it. All right. I hope those, those tips help. Uh, you save $450 a month. I would love to hear how much money you save this month. Um, and I will see you again next Monday.